Throughout the first 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's historic run, we've seen many villains come and go, many of whom never made it past a single film or even a television season before being killed off. A select few, meanwhile, have returned for more than one outing to serve as thorns in our heroes' sides. There's also a number who have survived only to disappear after their initial introduction, either incarcerated or just off roaming free somewhere, though deserving of returns either for the sake of closure or because of what their re-emergence could mean from a narrative standpoint. As the surprising return of the Red Skull in Avengers Infinity War and the long-awaited arrival of Graviton in the fifth season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. proved in 2018, the franchise is clearly open to playing the long game with its evildoers. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, back from peering through Kevin Feige's bedroom keyhole to take a look at 10 MCU villains missing in action who need to return. And just to keep things interesting and a little spicy, they must be missing in action since no later than 2016, which means villains from 2017 and 2018 are sitting this list out purely due to recency. And of course, all the entries on this list must still be alive. Number 10, Baron Mordo, last seen in Doctor Strange. As ally turned enemy of Doctor Strange, Mordo is one of the most recent of the franchise villains on this list, last seen taking away the very magic that Jonathan Pangborn relied on to overcome his paralysis as part of his larger goal of stripping the unworthy, in his eyes, of their powers. Of course, Strange himself has continued appearing in the franchise, making an appearance in Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Infinity War, but his own sequel is still quite a ways off, likely not appearing until 2021 at the earliest. Unfortunately, this means we certainly won't be catching up with Mordo for a few more years at least, and with that sequel potentially revolving around the villainous nightmare, it's possible that Mordo might not take up too much of the spotlight. Number 9, Zemo, last seen in Captain America Civil War. Two years before Thanos managed to defeat the Avengers and wipe out half the universe, Zemo managed to split our heroes right down the middle in Captain America Civil War, putting Tony Stark and Steve Rogers at odds with one another in a way that left the group torn apart and vulnerable. Though his plan was meant to end with the taking of his own life, Black Panther prevented him from doing so, so that he could face judgement and imprisonment, and the former Sokovian soldier was last seen contained and content about his overall success. And while his story could fittingly end there, it's hard to imagine he'll be too happy about the Avengers' failure to prevent the decimation, just as he blamed them for what Ultron did to his home and his family. Turning to Marvel Comics history, Zemo is also known for forming one of the several iterations of the Masters of Evil, an aptly named group of evildoers. It'd be interesting to see the MCU's version of the character putting his mind to work in order to bring together villains from the overall franchise franchise in an attempt to take on the Avengers again following their inevitable reassembling by the end of Avengers Endgame. Number 8, Blizzard, last seen in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2. One of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s many great attributes has been its willingness to play the long game when it comes to tying up loose ends. At this point, it feels like many of the important threads left dangling from the first season have been tied up, which means that the fate of Donnie Gill, who was introduced in Season 1 and returned in Season 2 brainwashed by Hydra, is now one of the show's oldest unresolved plot points. Though he was shot by Daisy and tumbled into the ocean, the show made it a point to mention that his body was never recovered, and it's difficult to imagine that he didn't survive. I mean, that's basically film talk for, yeah, this dude is definitely still alive. And having him return in a future season, undoubtedly with his powers far more developed and dangerous, would serve to give the team a chance to face their past in a unique way, all while giving fans resolution to the long-standing mystery about what became of the character. Number 7, Felix Blake, last seen, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3. We've only seen Agent Blake a handful of times, but his journey has certainly been an interesting one. After his introduction in 2020, 12's one-shot item 47, he turned up in the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where he was nearly killed and put out of commission by Deathlock, disappearing until a single appearance in the third season. That appearance in the episode Watch Dogs revealed that Blake's encounter with Deathlock, coupled with the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D., had warped his mind, instilling with him a hatred for both his former allies like Phil Coulson and the Inhumans. And though Coulson and the team battled with the Watch Dogs, Blake ultimately got away and hasn't been seen or 
heard from again since. Of course, the Watch Dogs played a huge role in the show's fourth season, which made Blake's absence all the more noticeable. With at least two more seasons on the horizon, however, and with the series' willingness to find ways to tie up loose ends, hopefully Blake can be brought to justice before all is said and done. Number 6, Mitchell Carson, last seen in Ant-Man. We got our first look at Mitch Carson in the 1989 set opening of Ant-Man, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and colleague of characters like Hank Pym, Howard Stark, and Peggy Carter, though, as the film revealed, Carson's true allegiance was to Hydra all along. By 2015, the character was ready and eager to get into business with Darren Cross to obtain the yellow jacket suit for Hydra. When Scott and the gang attempted to thwart Cross at the end of the film, Carson managed to slip away in the confusion, stealing some pin particles for good measure before exiting the film completely. Since then, Carson has been absent from the entire MCU, even sitting out last year's Ant-Man and the Wasp, and one can only imagine what he and whatever Hydra cell he's a part of are currently up to. It's also no secret that director Peyton Reed has talked about a scene that didn't make the film in which Ant-Man apprehended Carson and returned retrieved the particles, so those involved actively chose to leave him as a loose end. Number 5, Abomination. Last seen, The Incredible Hulk. Alongside Obadiah Stane, Emil Blonsky was our first heavy-hitting MCU villain way back in 2008. Obsessed with beating the Hulk, Blonsky injected himself with far too much of the super soldier serum recreation that General Ross had brought him in on, becoming the Abomination and going to war with the Hulk in the streets of Harlem, gleefully causing chaos throughout the city until the Hulk brought him down. After that, Though the World Security Council attempted to have him freed so that he could join the Avengers until Agents Coulson and Sitwell used Tony Stark to convince Ross otherwise, Blonsky was held in S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Alaskan-based vault, never to be seen or heard from again. Of course, the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. has also happened in the years since his incarceration, and whether or not the vault was compromised by Hydra remains to be seen. For all we know, Blonsky could be free and biding his time, working as an asset for Hydra, or perhaps even Hydra knew better and he still in custody. Whatever the case, it'd be interesting to see how time has changed Blonsky, particularly as the actor Tim Roth seems open to returning to the role. He even mentioned following the release of Avengers Age of Ultron back in 2015 that Abomination's inclusion in that film had initially been considered before being scrapped. Whether it's by joining a potential Masters of Evil-like group or simply looking to settle the score with the Hulk, the return of the MCU's oldest surviving villain for another round would be a welcome one if handled correctly. Number 4, Ultron, last seen in Avengers Age of Ultron. Despite appearing in only a single film, 2015's first Avengers sequel, Ultron has left quite a mark on the MCU. Aside from being responsible for the death of Quicksilver, his actions in Sokovia resulted in a great many side effects, like sparking Zemo's hatred of the Avengers and giving birth to the Sokovia Accords, all of which weakened the Avengers leading up to Infinity War. It's actually unfortunate that the real Age of Ultron lasted mere days, as the villain himself, unforgettably portrayed by James Spader, was an engaging presence. Now I know one of the stipulations set forth at the outset of this list was that the villains on it must have been alive last time we saw them, and though it seems that Ultron may be quote unquote dead, there's enough ambiguity about whether he may still exist somehow, such as Return to the Mind Stone or something, it was impossible not to include him. His roots in the comics have demonstrated time and time again that he never stays down forever, and having him return in some form, even if just for a surprise appearance in Avengers Endgame, which seems to be revisiting past events of the franchise, would be awesome, particularly for more of Spader's performance, as Ultron and his motivations will undoubtedly have evolved in the time that slipped by. Number 3, Justin Hammer, last seen in All Hail the King. After the events of 2010's Iron Man 2, which saw Justin Hammer being taken into custody for his role in Ivan's big scheme, Justin Hammer made one further MCU appearance in 2014's All Hail the King one shot, making a quick cameo in Seagate Prison. Though the first season of Luke Cage name dropped him a number of times thanks to the existence of the infamous Judas Bullets, the character himself has yet to be seen since the one shot, which is unfortunate as Sam Rockwell, aside from being an excellent actor 
that the MCU would be remiss for not utilizing again, has made it clear more than once that he's eager and willing to step back into the role. Not to mention the character has a pretty heavy grudge against Tony and Pepper. Even if Tony doesn't survive the events of Avengers Endgame, him resurfering to try and destroy Pepper's life would be an interesting development for her character going forward. Or if a character like Zemo shows up to form a group akin to the Masters of Evil, Hammer would serve as a perfect recruit for the villainous menagerie. Number 2, The Leader, another villain last seen in The Incredible Hulk. Perhaps the franchise's oldest, biggest loose end is the fate of Samuel Stearns, the character's final on-screen moments back in 2008's The Incredible Hulk, teasing his future as the leader as the character began undergoing a mutation thanks to Bruce Banner's blood entering a head wound he had suffered thanks to Emil Blonsky. Since then, a decade has gone by and the character has yet to re-emerge, which is unfortunate though unsurprising as the film he was introduced in is sort of a black sheep entry in the franchise at this point. Fortunately, however, the return of General Ross in recent years has suggested that Marvel Studios isn't entirely adverse to bringing the events of and the characters from that film back into the fold. Which means I don't think it's crazy naive to hope that one day the character and fans could maybe get some closure. It's also not crazy to speculate that he could show up outside of the main Marvel films and in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. The leader could be a really cool and unique antagonist for the team to take down. Number 1, The Mandarin. Last scene, kind of never. So, to be fair, yeah, the Mandarin is a character we have yet to properly meet in the MCU. The Ten Rings group he leads has been a part of the franchise since Iron Man kicked the whole franchise off, still active as recently as Ant-Man, which saw a representative of the group looking to buy the yellow jacket suit from Darren Cross alongside Mitchell Carson. Of course, Iron Man 3 saw Killian create a fake cell of the terrorist group to further his own goals, using Trevor Slattery to act as the Mandarin publicly, but after the events of the film, saw Killian dead and Slattery incarcerated, the real Mandarin had Slattery broken out of Seagate prison to answer for masquerading as him in the one shot All Hail the King. The short film confirmed that the Mandarin is very real, out there, somewhere unseen, and it's hard not to hold out hope that he will surface in the MCU somewhere, someday. 